John and Justin. All right, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's uh, council work session for Monday, September 13th. At this time, we'll now call tonight's meeting to order. Uh, as we begin, I'd like to turn it over to Council Member Lundy in just a quick moment, but I do want to make sure we um, acknowledge September 11th, last Saturday was the 20th anniversary. So if we could just pause for a moment of silence and then Council Member Lundy, if you would lead the opening prayer, that would be the order. So please, um, for a moment of silence for those who lost their lives and the brave men and women who uh, gave their all that day. Thank you. Council Member Lundy? Yes, Madam Mayor. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, for the opportunity to serve the people of our town. Help us to act with courage, character, and conviction, and to help us to lead well, to listen with understanding and goodwill. Give us a spirit of service. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, at this time, we do, um, well, before we get into the approval of the agenda, want to take a moment to notify the public of a few meetings that were held uh, last month and then one on September 7th. Mr. McCrory, I apologize. I'm trying to find the handout. The summary. <coughs> I think I handed one over to you, Mr. McCoy. So on Tuesday, July 29th, a closed session was held here at the Bladensburg Town Hall to discuss personnel matters and to protect the privacy or reputation of individuals concerning a matter not related to public business in accordance with the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Council members Blunt, Lundy, Rout were in attendance and all three members present voted to close the session. Town Administrator McGrory was also present and Chief Collington for the first portion of the meeting. The authority to close the session is found in Section 3-305, Section B, 1, and 2 of the General Provisions Article. The Council discussed the following topics, the Ethics Commission, Morale, Town Administrator, Town Administrator McGrory's Feedback and Communication, the Clerk Position, and two votes were taken for T.A. McGroy to hire administrative support until the town clerk vacancy is fulfilled. The votes were unanimous by those present. The second vote was to have a, a follow-up closed session on August 5th to address issues with the entire council related to ethics and morale. And again, that vote was unanimous. That meeting adjourned at 7.03 p.m. The second closed session was held Thursday, August 5th, again at the Bladensburg Town Hall. The council met to discuss personnel matters in accordance with the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Mayor James, council members Blunt, Lundy, and Rout were present, and all four voted to close the session. T.A. McGrory was also present. The authority to close the session is found in Section 3-305, Section B1 of the General, General Provisions Article. The town council followed up on the previous items, ethics, morale, <coughs> T.A. McGrory, and the town clerk position. There was a vote to direct the town administrator to send a letter to the Maryland State Retirement System regarding the presentation you just saw, the law enforcement officer's pension system. 
and the vote was unanimous to proceed with that. The meeting adjourned at 7.04 p.m. The town council met on Tuesday, September 7th at 5.30 in closed session to discuss a personnel matter in accordance with the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Mayor James and council members Blunt, Lundy, Mendoza, and Route were in attendance and all five closed the session or voted favorably to close the session. Town Administrator Ferguson also attended and uh, T.A. McGorry attended the open part of the meeting. The authority to close the session is found under section 3-305, section B1 of the general provisions article. The town council discussed the following topics, uh, personnel matters, uh, one regarding the performance of a department head. Um, a vote was taken, that vote uh, did not pass to take a specific action regarding that specific employee. The second vote taken was to uh, document performance for a, a specific employee. The recorded vote was in 3-2, and that vote motion did carry. The next vote was for a motion to remove specific members of the Board of Supervisors of Elections, and that did pass in a 3-2 vote. The motion to direct T.A. McGorry to hire a town clerk by October 1st passed unanimously 5-0. to zero. And the final vote was to direct T.A. McGorry to hire an interim town clerk if for some reason he was unable to get a suitable candidate by the deadline of October 1st. That motion did also pass with a vote of 5-0. Uh, that closed session did adjourn at 7.07 p.m. So again, wanted to report out to the public regarding those specific closed sessions. And so with that, I will turn my attention back to the, um, the agenda and ask for, um, I believe it was Council Member Route who was asking just to make sure your agenda item about the free English classes was on here since we didn't get to it in the work session. I have it under new business already. And then we did start a presentation with our guests regarding the um, Frederick Douglass uh, book that is going to be released. We couldn't allow them to finish, so do want to ask that we allow them to continue before we get into the recognition. So uh, is there a motion to amend the agenda to add our special guests with their presentation um, before we get into the recognitions and then would ask for a motion second after that to approve the agenda. So again, the first motion is to amend the agenda. So moved. Moved by Council Member Lundy, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Rout. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. So again, our presenters will go before recognitions at this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I so move. Moved by Council Member Rao. Is there a second? Seconded. Seconded by Council Member Lundy. Um, I did want to just call out, though, we didn't get into uh, addressing the conflict with the fall conference in the mail. I just realized that's not on here. Yeah. So if we could um, amend this agenda to include that, because we do have to determine because some of us have the classes, the Academy of Excellence classes. If three of us, for example, go, there's only going to be two people left for that Monday, October 11th meeting. So we do need to take a vote to move our October meeting. So I would ask for um, an amendment to place that on the agenda. So moved. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Murphy. No, I was just going to add, while you're amending, I was going to throw in a second thing. So Ms. Thorpe, I believe, is here from the International School of Langley Park. Yes. And the chief has a recognition for her as well. Unfortunately, that didn't physically get written on the agenda, but he had, uh, had oh. made me aware this presentation was coming. So I wanted to give him an opportunity. If you could do that under recognition, yeah. uh, perhaps C, um, that would be great as well right. if you're amending the agenda. Sorry to yeah, jump, no jump Councilor Member Lundy trying to amend the agenda, <laughs> but I thought you could work two for <laughs> one. Council Member Lundy, did you have an item also? Did I have one? Also? Did you have an item also for the No, no, the agenda? proclamation is already on here. Yes, ma'am, it's yeah. on here. Okay, so with that, is there a motion to approve the... Oh, I'm sorry, we're on discussion. So I now call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you all so That's much. That's for the amendment. That, um, the first 
One was for adding the Frederick Douglass presentation to the agenda above recognition, so that passed unanimously. The next vote was for the approval of the agenda. So during discussion, we also added the recognition of Ms. Thorpe, and we also added the MML <coughs> conflict with our October meeting. Perfect. So the original motion is still on the floor to adopt the full agenda. Right, that's the one we Got just it. voted on, which um, we what, called we, for the eyes. I, I thought we just voted on the amendment. That We already did that. That was 5-0. Got it. So then we called for approval of the agenda. Got it. Okay. All right. So with that, I do want to allow our special guests to just quickly, if they can wrap up their presentation. Again, thank you all for your patience, for hanging in there with us. I think they're connected now to the the virtual meeting, and then we'll get right into yes. our recognition. Sorry, the presenters you want to continue? Yeah. Okay. Yep, let me just get this up on my screen. All right, thank you. Uh, Okay. Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear us? So, gentlemen, okay. you're back in business. Okay. So wonderful. Now we just need the um, audio in this room, Rick. Or, oh, you've got it. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, thank you for having us on again. Uh, we, the reason why we're making this presentation is we are um, asking uh, Town of Bladesburg to issue uh, potentially just statement of support and or even like a forward where you see around, let's say, the bicentennial in the 1970s, there were a lot of local history publications, and many of these uh, had uh, like a, an endorsement or statement of the local history by uh, that, that town uh, or, or history organization. Um, and I've tried to reach out to the local historical society, but I think they've been shut down because of COVID. So anyway, so that's why we're here is essentially sharing this information. Uh, this is this unknown, unrecognized history and kind of bringing this to uh, the town's attention because it happened here in uh, your jurisdiction, your locality. And we feel that that um, it's kind of like our, our good faith effort. So that's, that's the purpose of this presentation. Um, I, I don't think I, I mistakenly did not state that initially. I don't know if you want to say anything, Justin, we get right back into the presentation. Oh yeah. Let's just get back in, into the presentation. Sure. Yep. Okay. Well, this, well, this, this image is actually of, um, Justin's two sons. We were doing a cam yes. uh, history canvassing a couple weeks ago, and this is the location where uh, Frederick Douglass spoke. This was known as Spa Grove. It was a gathering place for political events, um, actually for, for decades before the Civil War and after the Civil War. And so this is um, the actual uh, you know, ge geographic area um, that, the wa that I'm sure some of you know, obviously know where this, this is. Okay. Um, this is just a newspaper clip um, from the National Republican. The Hyattsville rally uh, talks about this was the, the Republicans uh, were gathering in August. The Democrats had had a, a very large rally. The governor of Maryland had attended. So this was the Republicans response. Frederick Douglass was supporting uh, the candidacy of William R. Wilmer. You'll see on the right or in the middle image, Marshall Frederick Douglass to kind of summarize uh, his remarks. He introduced the candidate. Uh, Mr. Wilmer, on the, the, the image on the right, you'll see at the bottom, William R. Wilmer for Congress. He was, he was from Charles County, but the, the 5th Congressional District included um, Prince George's County, Baltimore, Baltimore Howard, Montgomery County, uh, Charles and St. Mary's. Okay. Um, there were other prominent speakers at this rally that Frederick Douglass attended, including um, uh, Treasury Secretary John Sherman, uh, Richard Theodore Green, who at that time was the dean of Howard Law School. He's the first uh, black American graduate of Harvard um, University. And Henry Stockbridge, who was a congressman. He was a region of the University of Maryland in Prince George's County. Later went on to be a judge. There were other um, local and national figures, but this is a very, very large uh, rally. There were reportedly up to four or 5,000 people at this event. And just a, just a quick back note of that as well. Uh, John Sherman's brother, 
uh, William Tecumseh Sherman, you know, some of you might know him. He is the uh, the, the general who uh, who or, who signed off on uh, Field Order 15 uh, post uh, Emancipation Proclamation. Just a little factoid. Uh, Reverend Henry Plummer was one of the uh, vice presidents of the nominating uh, rally that they had. Um, the Plummer family is very closely connected with Riversdale. Um, and Frederick Douglass is very interconnected with the Plummer family. Uh, Reverend Plummer is on the right there. This was a sign. Uh, Justin and I went looking for this. We couldn't find this. This had been installed, I believe, a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, I guess it's it's not there anymore. But there was a, a sign for the uh, Plummer family. This is an image from Nellie Arnold Plummer's 1927 book. Uh, I don't know if the gentleman, Mr. Ruffin, is related to uh, Mr. J.B. or the gentleman, Mr. Ruffin, serving on the Bladensburg Town Council is related to Mr. J.B. Ruffin. Um, we would think maybe there is a connection. Frederick Douglass was, was, was close enough to the Plummer family that he um, lent them lent them money to, to build the house that this picture is take, taken in front of. A thousand dollars, which is a sizable sum at that time. And let me take it. Let me take a step back with Reverend Henry Plummer in 1884. Frederick Douglass wrote a letter to President Chester Arthur recommending or endorsing Reverend Plummer for the position of chaplain of the United States Ninth Cavalry, which Reverend Plummer did secure that appointment. So when Frederick Douglass speaks in Bladensburg in 1880, Reverend Plummer is in attendance. Um, and this was an example of the, the, the relationship and connections and associations that Frederick Douglass had with the Plummer family. And then a couple years later, he wrote a letter to the president endorsing uh, Mr. Plummer as chaplain. Correct, yep, many, and, many threads. Yeah, and just just an in interest of time, we won't we won't deviate into all those various connections. But the the booklet is focusing on the speech that Douglas gives in 1880 in Bladensburg, but then also discussing his connections to the Plummer family and their associations with Prince George's County. And then to just book end this, I heard a, a discussion about the Bostwick House. Um, the builder of the Bostwick House, Mr. Lowndes, is the great grandfather of Lloyd Lowndes, who was uh, governor of Maryland from 1896 until 1900. He was a one-time congressman in the 1870s. When Frederick Douglass spoke in Cumberland, which is where Lloyd Lowndes was based out of, Frederick Douglass um, spoke in Cumberland. Lloyd Lowndes was part of his entourage. Frederick Douglass wrote a letter uh, to newspapers in 1874 endorsing Lloyd Lowndes' uh, election to Congress. And uh, actually, they had dinner uh, in Washington, the 1870s. So, so those are kind of some of these these periphery connections that build out the history of. I heard you know there's efforts to to renovate um, the Lowndes House, and Douglas was connected to, essentially the the descendants of the uh, the the gentleman who started and founded and built the Lowndes House, and so kind of comes full circle. I don't know if uh, Justin has anything else to say. We just really want to thank you for your time um, tonight. I know it's a very packed agenda. I don't know if Justin, do you have anything to say? I'll be, yeah, no, I just want to say, I just want to, we're appreciative of you guys giving us this, uh, this moment to kind of put this on the public record and to, um, you know, introduce this, this completely lost history. Um, and that's a, that's a, another thing I was talking to John about today is like, you know, it's important to me that we do these type of things so that my, my children, who I take on these canvassing uh, history missions, uh, you know, John and myself, uh, they can get a you know fuller understanding of, of Frederick Douglass. They've read the Frederick Douglass narratives, you know, they they know the uh, the Wikipedia history of Frederick Douglass, but you know, they're not aware of these, you know, uh, smaller localized histories, you know, until I kind of can instill them, inculcate them in you know Douglasonian you know scholarship. And so I think it's really important that you know all children everywhere be able, especially in Maryland. Uh, be able to experience this and uh, learn and, and, and be, you know, be inculcated in the Douglasonian, uh, you know, uh, scholarship as well. And one last thing, we we have um, reached out to some other um, local elected officials, um, Congressman Brown, and we have a connection with Senator Van Hollen's office uh, as they've expressed kind of a support for local history and Frederick Douglass history on uh, the past couple of years. In 2018, the city started, or excuse me, the state in 2018 began to um, really recognize and put some resources into Frederick Douglass history because of the bicentennial.
Yeah, as well, um, uh, Mr. Turk with the uh, U.S. Marshal Service. He's also expressed uh, interest and uh, support for this for this history. When Douglas spoke in Bladensburg, he was serving as United States Marshal for the District of Columbia. That's that's the connection that's to the Department of Justice. Yep. I don't tonight, know. but also so, for reaching out and sharing the opportunity to be a part of the book that is going to be coming out soon. Um, so we definitely want to um, give acknowledgement to the fact that they are asking for a forward from the council members who are interested. And so just want to make sure that um, perhaps since you've been in touch with them already, Council Member Lundy, you can find out from them what's the best method word count, and then that way everyone who okay. wants to participate, we can just submit our information. We can, we can put it together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay. Council Member Rout. Thank you, Mayor James. Um, and speaking with Mr., um, I spoke with Mr. Justin, and our conversation got cut off because I had to go to a meeting. Um, I was so moved by the history that we have right here in our town of Bladensburg. We should be championing the fact that we have history right here. I would even suggest that at the point in the town of Bladensburg where we had Spa Grove, like we should take it upon ourselves and take some future action to put something there. Like this is our history, it's so rich. And to be honest, that's one of the things that attracted me to the town of Bladensburg when I was looking for my first home 10 years ago, nine years ago, um, going to Howard University, being a graduate, a double alum, I, want, I, I wanted my first home to have something, you know, and I'm proud of that, and I champion that, and this we have to be involved in this, and especially how it ties into our legislative priority, the Boswick House. As soon as Justin told me that, I was like smiling from ear to ear. Y'all would have thought that I won the lottery. I think that this is an excellent and phenomenal way to invest in our historians, take this time to share this information with our elementary, our high schools. Like, look, you all, you belong to a municipality with rich history. That is an added benefit on how we can continue to market our phenomenal town. So I'm in support of this, and I would like to be involved in the writing of the forward as well. Thank you, Council so Member. Very appreciate I saw you. your so hand, very and then we do need to yes, move on. But go ahead, Council Member. Yes, thank you. thank you, Madam Mayor. I would just, first of all, thank you guys for coming. I see your faces. <laughs> Um, I would ask if you could please send um, us a link to whatever you're doing. Can you send a link to a page or something like that? Maybe we could post it at our website or what have you that talks about this history. Okay, thank you so much. Definitely, right, we, can, we, yeah, we, we can definitely follow up. Thank, thank you so much you. for your time, and, everyone. Uh, from the Boswick House Stakeholder Group, um, for Mr. Mullen and Mr. McNeil's benefit, just really quickly. One of the things that we've talked about is we try to think about uses for that mm -hmm. space with the preservation and restoration mm -hmm. as some sort of tour yes. because there are several historic sites in the town. So it is already on our minds to be thinking about how we connect it. Um, so if, whether it's a walking tour or something. So I just wanted to plant that seed in case you guys have ideas, please let me know. But um, again, the stakeholder group is exploring those kinds of um, ideas as they, they conduct uh, their, their work. Um, the next item that we have up on the agenda, uh, we do need to move on. Is it brief? Councilmember Rout? Yeah, I would like to call for a vote for this. Oh, um, yes. I move to support the invitation to contribute lost history of Frederick Douglass and Prince George's County as an official forward from, from the Ladysburg Town Council. So moved. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. Aye. Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. At this time, we have the recognitions on the agenda. I didn't see <coughs> Councilmember Lundy. I don't see Pastor. Is he here oh. and the First Lady? Or? He's, he's, 
Oh, they're not getting in there? Oh, they're online. Oh, okay. There they are. Okay. Yep, there he is. Okay. Pastor Duvall. <laughs> All right. So, um, do you have the proclamation and council member? Yes, okay. I do, Madam Mayor. You want to go with that first? Uh, or you want to do um, Would it yield to our colleagues to do the. We can do that first and then pass the bill. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. Okay, I can do that. Let me pull it up. Actually, I have the hard copy here. Yes. I can. Uh -oh. oh, be careful. I, um, you have it with you? Yeah, I'll go ahead and. Or did you want to read it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Well, good evening. Good evening, Pastor Duval. Good to see you again. <laughs> So I had the um, privilege of, um, oh, can we hear him? We can't hear him. Well, so yeah, he can't so speak. we can only speak one at okay, a time. Well, I'll speak first, so, Pastor DeVoe. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Madam Mayor. So I um, had the great privilege of attending a celebration this past Sunday where um, the congregants honored Pastor Duval and Lady Linda Duval and the congregation for 30 year anniversary and 25 years of being in the town of Bladensburg also celebrating the um, 55 years that Pastor Duvall has been in ministry and, um, um, and also his years of being a music music uh, musician as well. And so I had sent this proclamation, I had wrote this proclamation and sent it forward late on Saturday, so I wanna thank Mr. McCory and our town staff who made this happen and got it done and thank our mayor and town council for even wanting to do this and on behalf of Pastor Duvall and and the Word of God Community Church, who has made great contributions over the years, even before I came into the council. And this was brought to my attention by a former council member, Walter Ficklin. And I want to acknowledge him, and because I am succeeding him as the lead for the Pastoral Lay Council. And he wanted to make sure that this was brought to the Mary Council's attention. And so therefore, let me read the proclamation. <coughs> Word of God Community Church Anniversary. Whereas, um, Word of God Community Church is celebrating its 25th anniversary in the town of Bladensburg, and whereas Word of God Community Church is celebrating its 30th ministry anniversary, and whereas this congregation was organized on September the 8th, 1991, under the name Word of God Community Church, and whereas beginning his ministry at Faith Missionary Baptist Church, St. Louis, Missouri, Elder Dr. Willie W. Duvall, Senior Pastor, has served faithfully. And whereas for the past 30 years, the mission and activities of Word of God Community Church has been maintained by its committed and dedicated members. And whereas fulfilling the command of the Great Commission, Word of God Community Church has always been a mission-minded church and continues to be a strong supporter of local, state, and mission programs. And Whereas Word of God Community Church exists to meet the needs of its members and communities in which they belong. And whereas members worship together as a community of believers and support one another's values and beliefs in the one true God. And whereas on this commemoration of its 30th anniversary and 25 years in the town of Bladensburg, Word of God Community Church remains as committed today as it was in 1991 to continue nurturing the faith of its members and to share the gospel message to surrounding communities. And whereas we celebrate this milestone, we pause and give thanks, honor and praise for the deep and abiding Christian commitment of those who in faith begin this work and for all those who have given so unselfishly during these many years to see that the work of the church continues to grow and thrive. And now therefore, we, the mayor and the town council of Bladensburg, Maryland, do hereby honor and congratulate Word of God Community Church on its 25 years in the town of Bladensburg and 30 years of ministry anniversary past this 13th day of September 2021 approved by the Town Council of the Town of Bladensburg, Maryland, and signed by Mayor Takesha D. James. Thank you.
Law, would you like to say a few words? Can't hear you, Pastor. Can't hear you, Pastor. Can't hear you, Pastor. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. We hear you. Oh, thank you. Not just located in the town of Bladensburg, but we have been and we are a part of Bladensburg. I honor the Honorable Mayor James and most certainly the one who served before her, uh, her wonderful husband. And we all have been in fellowship, working together for the good of the people and the glory of the Lord. Thank you. I speak for my wife, the officers of the word of God in the congregation. And we will continue to do that, that we do best, love God and serve his people. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. And we will make sure that we will make sure that you receive this proclamation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Lundy, and for also attending the service on uh, Sunday evening as well, letting us know how nice it was. We appreciate that. So next, um, we do want to acknowledge, we have a life changer in the room. I'm not sure if you all are aware. <laughs> She's laughing because she knows it's true. Uh, but Miss Kashia Thorpe is a wonderful teacher at the International High School of Langley Park. And I'm grateful um, to Chief Collington who came up with the recommendation of just acknowledging all of her significant efforts to the community. Mm -hmm. So I'll read a little bit about uh, her so the community knows, if you haven't met Ms. Thorpe, you'll understand why she's so deserving of this honor. So um, you wouldn't know this by looking at her, but she's been an educator for 16 years and she really does look 16. <laughs> Uh, and she's an endorsed <laughs> principal <laughs> who has spent most of her years educating English language learners. Over the years, she's been a great advocate for students and families and contributing to educational policies to benefit especially low-income students. She serves as a community school educator liaison for Prince George's County Education Association, helping to increase parent engagement in her <coughs> school and forging partnerships with community stakeholders. Again, for her dedication to her work in education, and not just her dedication, but her spirit of excellence, she was named the Grand Prize winner of Life Changer of the Year in 2018. And she was selected among teachers and administrators from across the United States. And I think, is that when you went to Hawaii? They yeah. sent you on the trip? Yeah. So I'm just saying, might want to become a teacher. Um, <laughs> she recently. <laughs> That's right. she, she, she recently received a Medal of Honor from Governor Larry Hogan for her work influencing education policies and was selected as a top 50 finalist for Global Teacher Prize. She has done so many things. She was a champion for us through the 2020 Census Campaign and even had her daughter out there helping and other students from the community. She started a program this year called Food for Change where because she is committed to meeting the total needs of her students, she was able to give free food to help benefit them. And serving that food, picking it up from here, taking it to them, evenings, sometimes Saturday pickups, you name it, she was dedicated. She participated in the My Mental Health Awareness event that was held here for the first time in May. She participated in our community bike rides. She um, also invited several uh, folks from the town to participate um, in the annual presentation, forgive me for not remembering the name, where the students get to the end and they do their portfolio presentation. Um, social justice. Yes. And um, also invited Council Member Lundy and Chief to participate in the International High School First Scholarship Writing and Award Ceremony. So she is a true champion of her students and their families, and for that we just want to take time to recognize 
Ms. Gashia Thorpe. So please stand. <laughs> I mean, this is this is awesome. Um, I thank you guys so much. You know, I always say that I am the teacher that I always wanted for myself, and I have a daughter. Um, for the, those of you who know, and I always say I'm the teacher that I want my daughter to have as well. And the work that I do, um, I'm surprised by the recognition. I'm always surprised by recognition because I don't. This is not something that. I work towards. Um, I work because this is what I'm purpose to. Um, you know, I think that teaching was my calling from God because this is not really what I actually went to college for. But once I saw the needs of students and I realized that I can actually really relate to their struggles, I wanted to make sure that I'm, I was a voice for them. And I wanted to make sure that students like me understand that there is a path to success, you know. Um, and for me, I wanted to help create that path for them to success. And so that's what my work has been, um, just to go above and beyond for my students. Um, and I am so privileged to have people like um, Mayor James and Councilmember Lundy and even, Ch even Chief Collington. Um, I remember the first time when I started teaching at um, International High School Langley Park, I had my portfolio presentation because I just wanted to show off my students. They were doing so great and um, you know, they're, mar they're from marginalized communities where people don't think that these kids are going to be successful. And because they're English language learners, I wanted them to talk to people outside so that they can see that um, we're doing great things at International High School Langley Park, helping these kids to meet their language proficiency levels. Um, and you guys came into my classroom and it filled their hearts, you know, um, and from that we just kind of forged these partnerships, academic partnerships, social communication partnerships, um, you know, fulfilling the needs over COVID. I remember when my students had food insecurity and because we were virtual, we weren't able to reach them. And so I called Mayor James and I said, Mayor James, my kids want food and she's like, I can help you with that. And at first, um, she said, well, we don't have anything coming now, but if your kids want it right now, we'll figure it out. 
and she connected me with other people and it happened. Um, and she said, Miss Thorpe, even though the kids are not, some of the kids are not here in Bladensburg, if you want me to help you drop some food off, I will do it. And so it's just that commitment. It's not just a one person thing it takes a village right and i'm so glad that you guys have been my village have been the village for my children i call them my children <laughs> um thank you guys so much um i'm so proud of you, what you guys have done in the community from the bla um the, the black lives matter march and just just everything and i i um as you guys were talking about the frederick douglas i was just whispering to her i'm like we do a unit on frederick douglas it's coming up in october i'm like i'd love to work with you guys on that project um so yes and it and um this was so interesting the presentation because as i was listening to it i'm like wow i didn't know that my kids study Frederick Douglass because I do a unit with them when they're writing their own narratives. They don't know that. How great would it be to just create something around this where my kids get to come into the community and, and be able to connect even more on a physical level with history that is actually in, where, in place where they're actually sitting. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I get excited every time I hear a new opportunity. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm, I'm overworked, but, you know, um, always for the kids. And thank you guys for always being my support and being my rock and being my resource and everything else. And um, lately, I know um, Council Member Rout, you and I have been speaking as well on how we can um, further those resources for my students. So thank you, guys. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable that you six are getting together for a photo, but could, if you want to... Rally up close. We can take a quick picture. Hold your breath. Um, do whatever you want. And uh, it would be lovely to capture this moment. Chief or official photographer here. <laughs> I'll take a well, I'll yeah. happily take one of you, Chief. Oh, oh, this is Chief, shall pick this phone. He's got the hot on. <laughs> for your patience to those who are viewing at home, but it is important to take time to acknowledge members of the community whenever we can. Um, at this time, I know uh, there was one other recognition, but that individual couldn't make it tonight, so we'll have to uh, move him to another, um, well, to a future meeting. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes, but I didn't see those in advance, so we'll have to table those until October. Uh, um, so at um, this time, yes, sorry. So, and I just wanted to ask, Chief, do you want the other uh, gentleman, Mr. Wiltshire, to come to a future meeting, or? or no, I'm going to uh, catch up with him tomorrow. Okay. He couldn't make it this evening. 
And, and so do you want to read the proclamation now or anything? Just procedurally, Mayor, if you wanted yeah, to get that on the record. Actually, could we see if he would be available for the October meeting? Because I do want to recognize him. The community has benefited a lot from his generosity, and I think it would be ideal if he could. I know he's crazy busy, but if he could come out, um, and maybe October is enough time for him to plan ahead. So I'll, I'll ask him. Okay. Uh, he and I did some extensive texting back and forth. <laughs> yep. And he said, Chief, I am really a, a early person. Okay. So we can do it no later than 12. That's um, my schedule. So I, I told so him that you know, we would like can. to recognize him on a higher <coughs> platform than just me showing up, giving him a plaque. But he's so humble. He said, we can just do it then. But I, I will touch okay. base with him again. So we can get him to October. Okay. Okay. And if not, then maybe um, we can just record it, the presentation, and then just play it for the public so they can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Uh, so at this time, uh, we will turn it over to our uh, administrative support in the clerk role. Mayor Jane? Um, yes, Council Member Mal. Yes, I move to table the approval of minutes to a future meeting until we can receive them. Is there a second? Seconded. Seconded by Council Member Lundy. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you. At this time, we'll turn it over to public comments, or for the public comments to be read. Okay. And Mayor, I just wanted to introduce Ray Jeffries. I'm not sure he's appeared at a council meeting before, so I'm going to just jump the queue a little bit to say how personally grateful I am the town of Bladensburg had the foresight to engage Ray as an intern some years ago when he was a student. And uh, we were pleased with the council's support to bring him back to assist us with some administrative tasks. And he's been jumping in anywhere needed at Town Hall. It's been a huge asset to us. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, have Ray introduce himself to the public. And uh, Ray, thank you so much. No problem. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ray Jeffries. Administrative aid for the town of Lanesburg, and I'll be reading some public comments. There's actually three of them. <laughs> Starting with the first one from town resident, his name is Steve Weiss. He lives on Tilden Road, and it states, <coughs> I want to thank Mayor Takesha James, our Ward 1 town council member, Jocelyn Rowe, and our town administrator, Robert McGrory, for getting the stormwater drains cleaned out. We did a walking tour of the stormwater drains from Tarzik Road to the Stable Lot Shopping Center. It's great to see all of the tree branches and weeds cut down and cleaned out around the storm drains. I look forward to Prince George's County repairing the, the <clears throat> damaged stormwater drain walls at Tarzik Road and also cleaning out the stormwater drain at Ronald Street and 57th Avenue. I also want to thank Mayor Takesha James, our Ward 1 Council Member Jocelyn Rout, and our Town Police Chief Collington for holding a Neighborhood Watch Rally to start the Neighborhood Watch Program in our town. I'm glad to hear Ward 1 residents and our, town, and our Police Chief Collington are doing Neighborhood Watch Patrols in Ward 1. I would like to encourage all town residents to help the Neighborhood Watch Program by looking out for your neighborhood and our town by reporting any problems you may see to our Bladensburg Police Department. Thank you. The second public comment is from Ms. Rosa Anderson. She also lives on Toxic Road and it states, as one who experienced what clogged drains can cause, I would like to thank Mayor James, Councilwoman Brout, and all who helped to clean the drains. Years ago, the drains were clean, were cleared and brushed cut on a regular basis. I hope that going forward, the maintenance will be ongoing as climate changes demand better upkeep. Thank you all, Rosa Anderson. The third comment is from Carlincia Peak, sorry, Carlincia Peck. Uh, she lives on Taylor Street. It states, each month, the Code Enforcement Department, CED, reports on the number of signs removed from poles. Residents, however, have repeatedly expressed interest on having other areas of the code enforced, such as maintenance of lawns, illegally parked cars on front of lawns, 
and on streets, and trash overflow on commercial lots. The attached photos an example of how the code is not being enforced as it states, as it relates to the maintenance of laws. <clears throat> Can the CED reveal in greater detail how it has been responded to complaints of this nature? For instance, how many citations each month have been issued to residents or businesses for code violations? How many have been assessed fines each month for violating the code. It is essential for, well, in the, they have a governance section in the states. It is essential that both elected officials and employees of the town of Bladensburg be able to work together in a professional manner. At a recent town meeting, Council Member Rouse stated that this is not the case. Council Member Blunt <clears throat> confirmed that she had witnessed unfair treatment what she seemed to attribute to resentment of council member Ralph's acknowledgement, knowledge and ability. This, not, this is not exemplary leadership from our town needs. <clears throat> Indeed, council member Ralph is knowledgeable, able and hardworking. Because of her talents, she should be especially admired, respected and encouraged. The town of Blainsburg and residents really benefit from having elected officials with these kind of attributes. No one, however, regardless of skill level, should have to endure a hostile work environment. Given these sentiments, <clears throat> please share publicly the town's mm -hmm. policy. One, concerning the work environment. Two, abuse of power. And number three, risk management of such behavior. In the vote section, it says, I'm in favor of one, longer voting hours and voting access for our working class community. And number two, mask mandates indoors to ensure the health and well-being of everyone in our community, especially the most vulnerable. Thank you. And those are all three comments. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Jeffries. And welcome back for your second time around with Thank us. You. As Mr. McGray said, we were grateful to have you as an intern, and it's wonderful to have you back. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And thanks to all of our residents who took the time to submit public comments. We certainly appreciate you doing so. At this time, we'll move into unfinished business. And the first item on the agenda is the legislative priorities for 2022, uh, the 2022 legislative session. And I would ask for, we did, uh, for the public that was watching, we did cover discussion in the work session so I would ask for a motion to approve the legislative priorities for 2022. Moved by Council Member Mendoza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Rao. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Aye. Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll follow up on the vehicle charging stations through um, the Pepco Utility Company. Again, for those who were with us in the work session, there was very high approval uh, from the council with moving forward with this initiative. Uh, so we do want to formalize it with a vote. Is there a motion to proceed with the agreement for vehicle charging stations with Pepco? So moved. moved by Council Member Route. Is there a second? No second. Seconded by Council Member Blunt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Uh, yeah, I oh. So, believe this is sent for legal review, and our attorney has not yet reviewed it. So, this is a contract proffered by Pepco, and I just wondered if the council chooses to modify its motion to yes, make a contingency based on legal review. That may be in the interest, but that is a Thank you for calling that out, uh, Mr. McCray. So, uh, Council Member Blunt, any further My question is, why was that even brought to us if we're entrusting that we had all of the up-to-date and adequate information, we're entrusting that if something is presented and ready and it's added onto our agenda, that should have been told to us from the beginning. So I don't mind adding it, but in the future, I would like for our town staff 
to make sure that they educate the town council on things that important, because that could have been a disaster. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rao. So the amendment to the motion was made and the comments were noted. So the motion is still on the table, so we'll move to vote unless there's further discussion. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. The next item, again, uh, sticking with unfinished business, is just to recap. Our October meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 11th, and the MML Fall Conference is October 10th through the 12th. So I uh, wanted to ask the will of the council in terms of shifting our meeting date, because otherwise there's a risk that we may not have a quorum. So any comments on adjusting the date? And looking at um, the calendar for October, if we push it out to the following Monday, that would be, I believe, October 18th. And per our rules, we do have to set the next meeting date if we're making a change at the prior meeting. Council Member Route. Thank you, Mayor Jane. So with that move, I, do we know who is who would like to attend? Are we at that point too? If we're met, like, because if are people going to be going in person? The, uh, the, uh, I just want to know. Right. So, um, so I, thank you, Council Member Rout. So that is a valid question. Is anyone planning to attend uh, the fall conference? I know I'm planning to go. No, um, don't quote me. It's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I want to go. Okay, so that's two with myself and Council Member Blunt. Council Member Rout, I saw your hand. I have a question. Is there a virtual option to go? Just virtually? I mean, we're still in the midst of COVID. I know, I'm not interested in going in person. If there's a virtual option, I would be interested in attending virtually. So, if it is a virtual option, too, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at the website, Council Member, and I don't see that explicitly called out. It doesn't mean it's not an option, but it just means I'm not seeing it jumping out at me. Um, Mr. McCarr, can you follow up the class, please? To see if there's a virtual option? Sure. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. And looking at the program, it doesn't appear to be the case. So, yeah, Mr. McGorry, if you don't mind, but again, we do have to make a decision at our regular meeting. With the, and the other thing, if they do, if they follow the same cadence they did for the summer conference, mm -hmm. the in person, which I think Council Members Rao and Blunt attended, that piece was <coughs> in person in Ocean City. However, a few weeks later is when they did the virtual option. So I could be wrong, but they don't have a lot of staff council member route, so I can't envision them offering virtual that same week if it is going to be an option. I think they would have to do the same thing because all of their people would pretty much be in Ellicott City, yes. So, with that, so two of us will most likely be out, um, but. Just as a mm -hmm. point of information, sorry, for staff as well, that is a town holiday. It's Indigenous yes. Peoples Day or Columbus Day, depending on which you celebrate. So for, for what that's worth, town staff would would not be at work that day, generally speaking. So that would also. So be just a quick day. correction on that. Thank you for mentioning it, but typically we are open on Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day. So usually the, the town hall offices are open traditionally. Okay. I know we get, for the town, the staff get Veterans Day, but not 
the October federal holiday. Thank you for clarifying for yep. the <laughs> So Mr. McGroy agreed to follow up regarding the virtual mm -hmm. option, but again, there's two of us here, so if it's the will of the council, you all can go ahead and meet on October 11th. Does that sound good? Because again, if we have to change it, we won't be able to after today's meeting. That per the charter, if you're making the change to the next month's meeting, you have to do it in the prior regular meeting. So, <laughs> Council Member Lundy. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we already, the motion was, that, I mean, the consideration is for us to suspend the meeting until the following Monday. Mm -hmm. So um, if my colleagues don't have a problem with that, because I don't know what's going to happen going that time anyway. Um, I have no problems with, with that. Councilman Morales or Mendoza? Councilman Morales? I, I mean, I, can't, I'm not, I, I don't have my calendar in front of me, so right now, that would be it for us. Okay. All right, thank you, Council Member Lundy. That's just we've talked Yeah, about. so with that, um, I'm sorry, say that. I'm not available when they need to. Okay. So that's just our holiday. Right. <coughs> the 18th of October? Yeah. So I'll put you back on the middle of that day. Okay. Oh, that's a holiday as well? Well, that's a holiday for me. For Columbus Day? Okay. On and the 18th. On the 18th, just because the town is closed, okay. there's other jurisdictions, and so that participate in that holiday. And no, I just, I, so I just looked it up online, and I thought it was on the 11th. So I my, did, too. My so I, that was oh, my mistake. It's on the 11th and not the 18th? That's what I saw online, but I, 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 um, I hold on. Because I had it down as <laughs> Yeah, so Monday is the federal holiday, but the town offices are open. So, but like you said, for those, like for our regular jobs, we get that day off. So if we push it to the 18th, you're not working on your holiday. So is there a motion to reschedule the October work session and town council meetings for Monday, October 18th? Moved by Council Member Mendoza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Lundy. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. So that concludes unfinished business. We're now under financial business, and I'll turn it back over to you, T.A. McGrory. Uh, so the BRIC funding opportunities, again, uh, is an info item on the work session agenda. Um, I described this program. Uh, it is in the early stages. We have expressed a notice of interest to obtain a 75% federal match. It's currently uh, submitted with others collaboratively in Prince George's County and specifically in partnership with Edmonston in support of their initiative. Um, and it's now with the state of Maryland uh, being vetted there. So they will come back with an invitation for a formal application at a future date. Great, thank you. And uh, at this time, we'll just wait to hear more in terms of what they approve in terms of our next steps. The next item is the American Rescue Plan Act. And we specifically want to approve the grant manager, or at least have a vote, hope the council will approve the grant manager position, but as was stated earlier, we are of the mindset that we would have to grow the staffing needed in that area to support the funds of that size. So with that, is there a motion to approve the position for grant manager? Oh, sorry, Council Member Rout, I didn't see your hand. I was looking down. Thank you, Mayor James. I move to approve two FTEs to support American Rescue Plan Act. Number one would be a grant manager, and number two would be a grant coordinator to support the American Rescue Plan Act. And Council Member Rout, thank you for that, but just to clarify, because they would be full contractors, right? Not full team. 
part-time employees because once this they ends per the write-up that you provided us with this is through the grant it looked like with the dates that were in there is this is was there a second are we in discussion i just wanted to see because i want to be appropriate in my response thank you thank you council member lundy and now for discussion council member Rao. yes thank you mayor james so as i shared in the work session the idea was that these are staff members that their salary and or fringe if we so determine that that is within reason if they're going to be working a full 40 hours we should be offering fringe benefits as well but it's time sensitive it's only during the time of the actual grant so it would they would be employees they would just if that FTE would end when the funding ends um, and so I wouldn't imagine having a contractor working 40 hours a week without any like benefits like health insurance and anything else um, but this we know that the grant at least is running until 2023 or 24 so that's a long time to just be a contractor without any benefits I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend that they have the full aspect of an employee. They would just, their funding would just be straight from the administrative cost as I shared in the work session. Thank you. So we'll just need to be careful to include that language also mm -hmm. for the grant coordinator. So it's like you said, it's clear. It's from this period to the end of the grant. Uh, any further discussion before we move to vote? All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. And again, thank you, Council Member Route. Uh, we're on to new business, and we did give an update um, previously with respect to the town clerk position, so that is ongoing. Um, the Port Towns Transportation Services, Council Member Blunt, I'll turn it back over to you for what your recommendation is so we can move to have the vote. We're gonna um, decide to pause, uh, pause the transportation at this time until we um, get some type of organization going on with how the bus will be ran or how we will do it. So th the motion is to pause the yep. service <laughs> for the Port Towns bus? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, seconded by council member Rao. Any further discussion? So just, Mayor, if I could yes. procedurally, I just mm -hmm. want to describe how I would intend to implement the council's motion. And it would be similar to a parliamentary procedure where you table something definitely or table something indefinitely. indefinitely yeah. So what I would recommend is that the pause be indefinite so that we can affirmatively say we are discontinuing this particular iteration of the contract until and unless the council votes to unpause. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So if that's the proviso, that would be my understanding of the direction going forward. And I'll communicate that to come over. Okay, thank you. And then as was stated earlier, it helps us prevent that whole 90 day notice of termination. Yep, okay. Is everyone in agreement? I just wanna make sure before we go to vote, okay. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you all so much. Uh, T.A. McGorry, I'll turn it over to you regarding the Port Towns quarterly meeting. Uh, there was a call for agenda items uh, that I distributed, and uh, they had asked one item was a Port Towns cleanup, um, was mentioned as something that Bladensburg had previously expressed an interest. I haven't been to one of these quarterly meetings yet, so I don't have a context for that. But if there are other interested items, I think Councilmember Rout had had a suggestion as well, and I wanted to be sure and let her uh, mention that as well. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to communicate on your behalf. Any agenda items that you'd like to communicate, um, if there's consensus, and I don't know what the general format is or whether each of you individually just says, Hey, I want to talk about X and that, that gets communicated to them, but I'm happy to do as you direct. Yeah, thank you. It, traditionally, it has been pretty informal. So um, if you wouldn't mind, once we hear from everyone, just sending over a note to let them know. Uh, Councilmember Rout. Thank you, Mayor James. Thank you, um, Town Administrator McGroy. 
Um, the two items that I suggested that we add, um, since a lot of the students that live within the port towns of San Bladenspark High School, I had the opportunity to have a meet and greet um, with Principal Faulkner Jones, and she would like to host a reception to uh, let all of the elected officials um, know and understand what her mantra will be as the new principal. So she came at the beginning of last school year. It was the middle of COVID. She really didn't have an opportunity to meet a lot of people, parents and things of that nature. But since school's open, she's here. She wanted to host a reception. And um, I was interested as you know our council coming, but then I also offered that if it's the pleasure of the Port Towns, uh, elected leaders because we have a lot of leaders for their I mean we have um, children who attend Bladensburg High School from their municipalities and she she liked the idea so I would like to suggest that that you know just to understand their buy-in in addition um, council member Lundy and mayor James they've dealt with the Department of General Services um, in the immediate past and most recently, and we'll be getting into some of that a little later. But just to have the program talk about opportunities like furniture and computers. I know the town, we've gotten a lot of computers on behalf of our stakeholders and constituents, such as the high school. Um, furniture, we furnished um, different offices with these particular donations. And it's from the Department of General Services, totally free. Mayor James secured like water and all these snacks during like COVID, which was just a huge blessing. That was before we got sophisticated with our boxes. I mean, we were really struggling those first couple of weeks, but they have resources and we wanted to be able to share that with our Port Towns partners. Thanks. <coughs> So it sounds like those will be it. With the cleanup, just you're aware, Growing Green with Pride is a county executive initiative. Um, so the goal is if we collaborate with the Port Towns partners and we do this across uh, all of our communities, it helps count toward our Sustainable Maryland goals because every few years we have to show um, evidence that we've taken certain sustainability steps in the community and you get points in order to maintain that certification through uh, the University of Maryland. So it does help us out quite a bit. Uh, but thank you all for that. Um, the next item was LEOPS, and so we have Officer Ryan Harris with us. Um, oh, you've got your, okay. One second, please. Okay. This is a uh, presentation on the law enforcement officer pension system. Uh, this is a specific pension system. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just, I'm like, okay, it's right there. Yeah. Sir? Yes, sir. That's all right. Yes, sir. I think that should do. <laughs> <laughs> that will do. Thank you. 
This is a presentation on the Law Enforcement Officers Pension System, which is a Maryland State Retirement Agency pension system geared only towards law enforcement officers. I know I have a little bit more time. I'm going to try to slow it down at the work session. I try to get everything in and be respect for everybody else's time. Uh, this pension system was created due to the only job stress and negative health impacts of police officers. Police officers experience daily psychological and physical stress that puts them at an increased risk for various long-term health effects, including cardiovascular disease, obesity, suicide, sleeplessness, cancer, and back and joint pain. A short little case study here is Chief Philip O'Donnell, who recently passed away on August 31st of this year. After serving two tours of duty in Vietnam, receiving three Purple Hearts, and more than 50 year career in law enforcement, Chief O'Donnell passed away. He was currently serving as the Chief of Police for the City of Glen Arden Police Department and was set to officially retire September 1st. He died one day before his retirement date. Some about the stress that our Bladensburg police officers are put under. They carry a minimum of 30 pounds of gear on a daily basis, which leads to physical health impacts. They sacrifice their holidays and family gatherings, which affects their family lives. They're exposed to violence and disturbing reality on a regular basis, which impacts their mental health. Currently, we are offered the state employees and teachers pension system for them in the town. Who can join these pension systems? The state employees and teachers pension system can be joined by all full-time town employees, including our police officers. The Law Enforcement Officer Pension System, or LEOPS as it's called, was established in 1990 to address the job-related stresses on law enforcement. Members of the Law Enforcement Officer Pension System is available to certified police officers employed by a state, county, and municipal agencies who have elected to participate in the system. To date, the town of Bladensburg has not elected to join. Some examples of how this affects us is the time in this job. As a police officer works more and more, they're increased to more physical, mental, and psychological effects. The more they work, the harder it is to cope with life. An example of our retirement under our current system for the state employee system is the time of service plus age would equal 90. An employee who starts employment at the age of 21 would work 34 and a half years and retire at the age of 55 and a half. An employee who is 25 years old at start of employment can retire at the age of 57 and a half after 32 and a half years of employment. And a 30 year old employee can retire at the age of 60 after 30 years of employment. Under the LEOPS plan, an employee need only work 25 years and can retire regardless of any other factors. How can the town join? It needs to determine the eligibility to join the system, submit application to the Maryland State Retirement Agency, request a preliminary evaluation, action by a government body has to be taken, the Bladensburg employees would have a choice to enroll or opt out, submission of employment enrollment to the Maryland Retirement Agency, a participation agreement would be submitted, and then a final evaluation would be completed. Step one, determine the eligibility for the system. The town of Bladensburg must determine if it's eligible to become a preliminary government unit or participating government unit, or PGU. A PGU that currently operates in the state system may elect to join a second state system if the local plan or the first plan requires member contribute the same rate as the member contribution rate that would apply to the second plan. In this case, our first plan is the state employee system, which we currently have, and the second plan is LEOPS. Both those plans do have the same contribution rate of 7%, so we would be eligible. The town must also improve its employees to participate in the retirement plan. We must then submit an application. The town of Bladensburg must put an application uh, for a participant government unit entry on or before September 1st, I think we've clarified now, or we have till November 1st, per the town administrator, of the fiscal year prior to seeking to join the system. Uh, you have to start in the system on July 1st. It's the standard type of that. You can't go over halfway through the year. It all starts at the new fiscal year. Then you request a preliminary evaluation. The system's actuary must perform a preliminary articulate evaluation to determine the town of Bladensburg cost of participation in the system. The cost of performing the evaluation 
is an expense the town of Bladensburg will bear, regardless if it decides to join the pension system or not. The estimated cost of the valuation is between $5,000 and $6,700. Preliminary evaluation request. To request a preliminary evaluation, the town of Bladensburg must notify the retirement agency in writing no later than November 1st, 2021 for a July 1st, 2022 entry. Employees may only transfer into the new system on July 1st. The first valuation is preliminary and is based on the previous year's valuation and statistics as far as uh, number of employees, tenure of employees, and payroll of employees. For the articulary to develop an estimate, the government unit must provide the retirement agency with certain demographic data for the employees eligible to enroll in the system. An action by the governmental body. After receiving the preliminary evaluation results and the estimated cost to join the system, the town of Bladensburg can do the following. Present the option of joining the system to its employees, at which time 60% of the employees would need to petition to become members of that system. And then town council must formal, pass a formal resolution authorizing participation in layoffs. This resolution must be submitted to retirement agency on or before May 1st, 2022 for the July 1st, 2022 entry. Employee opt in or out. If the employees have an election to participate in the system, this decision is a one time irrevocable election. Employees should be given at least two weeks to consider making their options. Submission of employee enrollment information. The town of Bladensburg must submit the retirement agency no later than May 15th of 2022, all required documents to ensure enrollment of the eligible employees and to initiate timely payroll reporting once the government body has decided to join the system and at least 60% of the employees have voted in support of joining layoffs. On or before May 15th, the retirement agency must receive the following. Properly completed, signed and notarized information for all the employees of the governmental unit who have indicated through the irrevocable election described above to join the plan. Application for membership for the enrollees, designation of beneficiaries, and proof of date of birth for the enrollees. A participation agreement. One or about July 1st, 2022, government unit in the system will enter into a written participation agreement which sets forth the calculation of the cost of participation and the responsibilities of the uh, participating government unit. If there is a cost, which will be determined by the valuation, a payment plan could be worked out. It is not due at once. Uh, so with Hyattsville, they paid theirs out over four years. Every year they paid a part of it. A final valuation will be performed by the actuary several months after effective date of participation to adjust the final cost of participation. The town of Bladensburg will also be responsible for the suspense of the final valuation. So because payroll changes from one year to the other, make it a COLA, a cost of living, whatnot, they'll do a second one to update the uh, financial information to give it final cost, which possibly slightly higher than the previous one, but should be around the same amount. Thank you. All right, thank you, Officer Harris. Are there any questions before it goes back to patrol?
and they're coming left and right. There is a shortage in the state of Maryland, all over the nation, actually, for officers. And we have some good officers. And they're getting offers from other places, and this investment is, can be that we can be able to retain our good officers. We want to pay for our officers that know our people, know our residents, know our children, know what dog belongs to which house, or, you know, the issues, the domestic violence issues, or the mental health issues and concerns that we had to be lost because we didn't have a system. These officers, they sacrificed their lives, and the least we could do is an available option is to be able to invest some resources. And I'm glad this came after the act funding because that would be something that be something that thank you I speak loud. Um, that would be something that the grant manager can manage the grant manager can look at how much money we need to pay into this system and be able to shift the money using the COVID funds and we can use these COVID funds to offset some of the costs so that we could journal the actual actuary costs and the rest of the costs so that we can be able to shift funds around. Now, I'm making sense in the grant world, in the grant mind, well, we, it's, it's called the, the balancing act is what we say in the grant world, where if the overtime cost is this, we get a credit or a journal to this pot of money, then we could replace it with the new expense that we need. So a, a good sound grant manager, grant coordinator would know how to do that in working with Treasury, but it took Officer Harris and the stakeholder group to develop the vision and let the chief know the chief championed this idea, brought it to us. This is your government working for you, residents. And please, let's just, let's make this happen. Go back. Thank you, Council Member Rowe, and thank you, uh, Officer Harris, and also to Acting Corporal Thompson, because um, you all really did do a good job of laying out the why, why this is important, and ultimately why it could be a benefit to our residents. If we take care of you, you're better able to take care of our community, and we don't take that lightly. Um, I'll tell you, last night at the Exxon, that was just one small example, but it was huge. Those officers had to deal with someone who was suffering from mental health crisis. And in other communities, they would not have taken the time to work through it with that individual. They would have immediately pulled out a weapon and fired. But I witnessed it for 45 minutes to an hour. They worked with them. Other municipalities even came to support, and they got it to a safe resolution without having to hurt anyone. So. The, like you said on that um, one of the opening slides, the amount of mental and physical emotional stress that you all bear, and then in addition to the toll that you it takes on your family time, not being able to be there for Christmas and birthdays and graduations, that, that pulls on you. And um, so again, we're looking forward to the data coming back from the actuarial study so we can make uh, the right decision. and. Um, continue making this a better place to work for you all. So thank you again. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, the next item, I'm not sure, is it Council Member Lundy or route the free English classes? What is that? The flyer. <coughs> it's in a packet of stuff that I sent you. Uh, when did you send it?
Okay. and she had um, received some laptops and computers, I believe, for Bladensburg High School. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted, as a new council member, to see what I could do for my constituents um, as a new council member. And so I looked, saw this opportunity. And so one of the schools that I reached out to was the International High School of Langley Park that's currently in Bladensburg. And at that time, I was working with um, principal, the principal there, um, Dr. Beato, um, and for some reason or another, we weren't able to connect. And so um, Rose Adometry, she circled back around me. And so I am a firm advocate, what meant to be is meant to be. Mm -hmm. And so she circled back around me, being the, um, the wonderful person and employee that she is. I just want to put that out there. Um, and so she circled back to me, just asked me, Councilwoman, do you still want these computers, laptops for the International High School of Langley Park? And I said, absolutely, <laughs> you better believe it. And so I contacted the new principal over there at, because um, I had, I adopted the International High School of Langley Park as my school. <laughs> so, um, so I contacted the new principal over there, um, uh, Miss um, Eunice Humphrey. Um, she's a new principal over there and presented this opportunity to her. And she said, absolutely. And then I reached out to my, um, my um, colleague, Council Member Route. And when I reached out to her, it just blew up to even bigger, even larger. And she said, well, you know, she presented this proposal to me. It wasn't like, blah, 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 blah. she presented this idea to me and asked me what I thought about it. She considered what I thought about it. And I said, absolutely. And so I again reached out to um, Rose Abadantri, Adamitri, Adam please forgive me for mispronouncing your name. Um, and so I reached out to her and she said, we definitely can support you. And so council member Route took it a step further, and let's bring this to the town of Bladensburg. And so I was able to secure 10, I believe 10 laptops for this particular program that I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague who'll talk more about it. Thank you, Council Member Lundy. It's been a pleasure working with you um, and Mayor James um, on this initiative, um, the background for Mayor James and working with you on this special initiative. When I, um, when I sought out support of my community, I realized that some of our residents um, want to perfect their English, but they don't have the resources to pay for classes and courses. We even have some staff members here in our town mm -hmm. that don't have perfect English, and they really want to do well and do good. And so um, I called around to Councilwoman Ivy's office, <coughs> Council. Councilman Hawkins office, I'm trying to find us some classes. And I looked upon free English classes for adult learners and by contacting Prince George's County Community College. Now they do have some classes that you pay for, but they also have some classes that are totally free. If you want to advance yourselves in your working environment, mm -hmm. or if you're trying to get a job, you fall under a umbrella category. And so what we did is we contacted and connected with Prince George's County Community College so that our residents can enroll in the free classes that, but all they would need is a laptop. So Councilman Maloney had the laptops, so I found the classes, and here we are. So in the winter of 2021, there's gonna be some classes and in the spring, all residents need to do in order to get their laptop, which will be totally free and they can have it for the rest of their life, 
is to call and enroll or email the adult education department and enroll in the course. Provide proof of that, return it back to us, and meet us here at Town Hall, and you will get your laptop, and you will go and do great, and we will want you to sign for it just so that we can show proof exactly. to DGS that yeah. we actually were good stewards of their donation. Yeah. And we want to be able to go back to G DGS yeah. residents to say, those 10 laptops went within the first week. Can we get 100 more? Yeah. So that all of our residents who are interested right. And being educated in English and English proficiency can obtain them. And not only do they have Spanish classes, they offer French classes. Right. They offer Vietnamese classes. They offer all sorts and <laughs> kinds of classes. And it's phenomenal. We so want to nice. help residents. And this is so nice. a way we can grade these resources. But I would like to get the support of the town council as an official program. Yeah. Um, and Councilwoman Lundy has one of the laptops. It's a nice laptop. Yes, I, didn't, I didn't get to be here because I had to work. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> I had to work. So I wasn't able to be here for the presentation. But Councilmember um, Rob was here. Mayor James was here. And so they were able to meet Miss Rose. who She needs a promotion. If <laughs> <laughs> her manager is listening. And so here you go. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Nice. I don't want to break a nail, but let me open this up. They're nice. Mm. They're nice like I mean, I just could just have tears. I mean, this this is one of the joys of being an elected official, of how you can really give back. And so it was just my privilege to to be heard, to have a vision, to have an idea, and then to be able to work with my colleague to make this happen. Thank you so much, Councilmember Lundy and Councilmember Rout for leading that effort. So with that, is there a motion to uh, approve the program for free English classes and laptops for adult Bladensburg learners? I so move. Moved by Councilmember Rout. Is there a second? Seconded. Seconded by Councilmember Lundy. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The eyes have it. Thank Again, thank you. thank you all so much. Uh, I, at this time, I know the time is getting away from us under staff reports. Um, was there anyone who is passionate about delivering their report? I know you all have written reports that will be available on the website, but anything to highlight? Oh, I am okay. extremely passionate about not highlighting anything from my staff report. <laughs> I've had plenty of time talking. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Mr. McGroy. Mr. Tonelli, Chief, is that the same for you under staff reports? Anything? Yes, okay. All right. So I'll move to Mayor and Council reports. Uh, Council Member Mendoza. Yeah. Good evening. I just want to thank the uh, staff, the mayor, the council, and everybody the police and everybody that, that helped put together the event the other day. Now, that event, you know, as good as it's, you know, it's gotten better. And we've been doing it for like 12 years. Now, the one thing I would say is the town then doesn't spend any money on it. Mm -hmm. We spend it all as all private donation. But the town does help, like you guys showed up and helped out. So you do put your, your part, but it, also, it is all private money that goes into putting the event together. So I'm kind of proud of that. Um, but but yeah, but seriously, all of you coming to to show your support and everything that was great. The, we are the only place in the in this area that the uh, Mexican government chooses to do this event. Oh. That's how much they love this town. Wow. Oh. They think that this town shows a lot of love. The police, they love the police. Even when the police were having bad names, the Mexican uh, government was defending our police because they said of all the love they the town this town has shown them and you know and the council and the mayor mm -hmm. so uh, you know i was really I, I was really proud of you guys showed up and, and help us with the event so thank you all absolutely thank you council member mendoza for your many years of service on mexican independence day um it was nice to be there to support you as you were awarded uh the beautiful Please. yeah the beautiful tribute uh at this time we'll turn it over to council member Rout. thank you mayor james <coughs> Um, I have been um, working on behalf of residents, businesses um, in a town, but I, I first want to address um, the fact that 
residents feel that we're bickering in, mm -hmm. up here. Um, and we're not bickering, in my opinion. I think this is democracy at its finest. We are championing, championing ideas and suggestions from our residents who elected us to lead and sitting here to represent people. So you may think it's bickering. I think it's work. And going back and forth is democracy. That's a democratic process. People sit down in the Senate House and they read dictionaries. We're not doing that. We're not wasting people's time. We're actually getting work done. And so I would like to ask the residents if you can just be a little patient with us because we're trying to work on your behalf to turn our town around. It may look like dysfunction. There has been some dysfunction. I think it's improving. We're not perfect. It's getting better our communication styles, um, since I'm the one that reported it last time, um, but it, it's getting better. It's getting better, we're making the turn, but we're working. We are actually working. Your town council loves this town, and we will continue to, I will continue as long as I sit in this seat, um, to champion residents' concerns, because I don't take my job lightly. I took an oath in front of my children and I joined this council for my children to make where I pay taxes better, okay? So it's not bickering. Um, but there is an example of something. There was a public comment that was submitted, not all of it was read. And that is, that's some of the stuff, the, 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 different, um, the, the different tactics that are being used to to, to, to mute people or withholding information or this council member gets invited to this meeting or that council member gets invited to that meeting. We are all equal. We have an equal vote. The only person that's different is Mayor James. She presides over meetings and she also um, is, is an emergency point, point, the emergency point person per our charter. I didn't make these rules up. They were here before I got here. And so I'm going to hold us accountable to those rules and to everything else. And I would like for all of our colleagues so we can all collegially hold each other accountable. Um, there is favoritism still amongst the council. It's getting better. But there's favoritism. Like I stated, all members are equal. I want to get down to the business. Most recently, residents have shared concerns regarding the noise ordinances. And I want residents to understand we hear you and we are actively working. I had a meeting today with Mayor James in reference to that noise ordinance issue um, and she took some action. We're putting our heads together. I have been talking with Chief Collinson. When I see something, I say something. Um, but I understand residents' frustrations and concerns with our code enforcement department. Um, there's, I, I don't have an excuse why it's not happening. I too am affected. I too call at two o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. You could check the call log. Council member Ralph, he calling. When I see something, I text, I say something. Um, we need to figure out how we can mitigate the noise issue and the code ordinances issue. That'll be something we champion. In addition, a highlight has been over the last couple weeks has been the Bladensburg athletic field. And um, it's been flooding and there's an issue underneath the field where there is a pump situation. Our PG County Public Schools, our Senator Malcolm Augustine, Mayor Jane, previous council, Councilmember Lundy, we have been working on these issues to secure these funding for mm -hmm. years. This is the third year <coughs> I've heard from Senator Augustine as it relates to just solutions. The good news is we received a letter. I received a response back from Prince George's County. That's progress, residents, businesses, students. That's progress. So we will continue to champion your ideas. There is funding available to fix the field. They're in the design process. They are working. Of the, all of the fall sports have been relocated to additional fields. Um, and our Bladensburg team, football team, they won. They blew Roosevelt out. They blew them out, JV and varsity. So it takes an investment when the kids see that we're investing in them. The kids are going to play hard, and the boys are so motivated. 
Um, lastly, the last I recent issue that I am working on, I, um, well, two, I'm sorry. The two issues I'm working on is the transportation issues. I know Mayor James has also been contacted. I had a parent call me crying yesterday that she did not know how she was going to send her daughter to school for this next week because the bus is not showing up. That is so irresponsible on behalf of the Prince George's County Public Schools Department. I did send a three-page letter to all of the board members today to let them know that we have a complaint and we also have some solutions. There are some solutions. It's going to be it's in my report. I would like for the town to post that letter that was sent on my behalf. Council members, if you have letters, we need to let our residents know that we are championing their issues because they are desperate. One parent who reached out to you, she paid $28 for her child to go to school one way. And she's a working class parent. She doesn't have that. She doesn't have that resources and those monies. But I put some solutions. They are solutions. I talked to Councilmember Hawkins about it on Saturday when I saw him. Board member Adam Stafford and I, we met. We are demanding meetings. Your council residents are working on your behalf. And we're not going to stop. So please continue to champion our issues. I'm working for you all. I'm working for my children, my family. And we're going to get this done. But we need your support. We need for you to stay engaged with us and be a little bit patient. Give us some grace. And don't think that we're up here bickering. Because I say it's working. Because look at us. We, we, we're, we're getting a lot of things done. And from the time that I've sat here and I've lived in this, count, this town for the last nine years, I think we've done a lot of work given that we are living in COVID. So I thank you so much, residents, for your continued partnership, support, colleagues. I know sometimes that could be a pain, but hey, we, we working. We working hard. Thank you, Council Member Rout. Council Member Blunt. I only have one thing to highlight, and that is the senior gathering on September the 23rd from 10 to 2. Please come out um, if you're a senior, 65 and older. Please come out. You can call the um, the office and register. We're only asking you to register because of the food amount. Make sure we're not overspending. So again, please, I'm calling if you'd like to come. If you did call in and left a message and you didn't get anyone, can you please call again and ask for Bob McGorry, <laughs> please, so that um, your message can be heard. We having problems with our phone system. So again, please be patient. Um, we want you there at the picnic. Even if you couldn't get in, just come on in. Come on by. It's a lot of fun, food, all kinds of entertainment. So see you there. Thank you, Council Member Blind. Council Member Lundy. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, in speaking with um, residents, since we all back to school, um, one of the issues, and one of these issues is not a new issue, um, talking about the traffic congestion um, with respect when the children are, or the students are getting out of school. And it's just a lot of things going on with the whole transportation issue anyway. And then also another issue that a parent is really concerned about, this one particular parent I talked to, is the overcrowdedness in classrooms and the necessity of how can we stay three feet apart? How can the students do that? And so a lot of parents perhaps are a little hesitant. You know, they really do need that virtual learning space. They really do need that virtual learning space. And um, then I was so pleased to hear from another resident who told me they really appreciated um, the legislation I put forth with respect to extending the holding hours because she was a, she's a working parent, has three kids, and she really did appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. But I really felt her heart, this particular resident, as she was talking about concern for the safety of her child who is doing the in-person learning. And she, you know, when they're 23, 24, 25, 28 kids in one class. So, yeah, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Council Member Lundy. Um, 
Mr. McGuire. <coughs> Mayor, I just wanted to interject, and I apologize. Through an oversight, and, and Mr. Tennelly just pointed this out, we did have a fourth item that was submitted for public comment, and uh, it followed the instructions precisely in the email blast, and it just didn't, when I reviewed this, I said, there are three, right? There are three, and unfortunately, uh, this fourth one got missed. So if I could indulge in, uh, yes, please. in doing that. And I just want to preface that by saying uh, th there was a comment made about an editing of another public comment that was submitted. And I just want to read from the Council Rules of Order that says, uh, public comments will be limited to three minutes. Persons making inappropriate, disrespectful, and or personal attacks, overly redundant or slanderous remarks may be barred by the mayor from further comment during the public meeting. So as a member of a team, people can say what they want generally about town government or about specific functions or things they want to improve. But if a person is criticized by name, legislatures the world over, including this one, do not permit that to be read into their own records. So I just want to say I took the editorial decision to do that for the protection, and I would apply that protection to any member of the team. And so I want to own my decision on that. Um, Thank you for that, because that it, just, to, just to put it, just to not have that, that, that's the information that's missing, that the public needs to know about. Okay. Thank well, thank you. you. I, I was given the opportunity to point that out, and so now I'm doing so. And again, I, I would have thought that would have been known to the body. It's in the council rules that, that right. um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy to quote from them as needed. So with that said, this is a separate and fourth uh, submittal from Susan McCutcheon of Spring Road, and she writes as follows. Good evening, Mayor and Council and fellow Bladensburgers. As an update on the proposed SC Maglev transportation project, there were two very important developments. One. The Baltimore-Washington Rapid Rail Company tried through a lawsuit to take land in Baltimore, a planned Westport community land development project, to have it condemned and taken over by eminent domain. They decisively lost their case, but they will no doubt appeal. Two, the Federal Railroad Administration put the project on a, quote, pause, the second one for this project, as they review the 4,000 comments they received about the project from agencies, organizations, and individuals. To be clear, the fight for the selection of the no-build option is not over, and we are in it for the long haul. However, these developments are positive news because they are causing costly time and financial delays for the company. We thank Mayor James in particular and Senator Augustine for their strong support and working with us in the grassroots opposition to speak out and do briefings for key elected officials. We're hitting them from all sides. I've been participating in the reconstituted neighborhood watch led by Mayor James and Chief Collington. It takes resident involvement and commitment to sustain the program. So for those of you making complaints on next door about what is wrong or undercutting the town government in the shadows, put on your sneakers and come out with us to show we care about our neighborhoods and intend to collaborate to improve all our lives by putting our best feet forward. Finally, get out and vote on October 4th or mail in your ballot. It's shocking, shameful, and embarrassing for the town that so few cast a ballot when offered every opportunity. Thank you, Susan McCutcheon. Thank you, Mayor, and I, my apologies for having missed that on the first pass of public comments. No problem. Thank you for making sure we did recognize all of the public comments. Um, so I'll be brief, just a couple of things. So Council Member Rout mentioned Bladensburg football field, which we are working to address still. Uh, the other concern that Ward 1 in particular residents are affected by is that 48th Street uh, situation with SHA. So it is still an ongoing matter. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, it's going to be fixed next week. Uh, we're looking at at least about 15 months to probably 18 months for that project once they actually start doing the work. But according to the engineer for this area and her team, they are doing some of the initial things that have to be done so they can eventually get to that stage. But there's um, engineering assessments that have to be done of the area. They also have to get an RFP from the contractor in order to um, designate that work. So things are happening, but that's on the state level. The challenges with the football field involve the state and county. When things are outside of Bladensburg, it just takes more time to get it done because of the approvals and permitting involved. So please bear with us. I'm pleased to say, though, for the, um, those who are affected by 48th Avenue, I'm sorry, 48th Street, uh, SHA did come back the other day and say, because I reached out and said, you know, what is a temporary solution that the town can support while you all go through this major construction? They have some solutions and they want to sit and talk with us. So we're trying to identify a date for that meeting for this week so we can get briefed on it. 
I've invited Council Member Rao, our school board member, to participate. And I also invite Senator Augustine because on the state level, his office can push that forward. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, we couldn't participate obviously tonight, but Prince George's County is holding the countywide sectional map amendment virtual hearings. So today was at 5 p.m. There's a second one tomorrow. I appreciate you tuning in tonight to this meeting and our work session, but tomorrow please tune into that uh, hearing because we need to make sure we know what's going on. We also need to make sure our voices are heard. For the town of Bladensburg, we had several meetings in 2020 prior to, I'm sorry, 2019 and 2020 prior to COVID, uh, trying to get clarification and also getting a reverse of opinion regarding the new designation that's being proposed for Annapolis Road 450. For those who aren't aware, they're trying to make it a CS designation, which is in direct conflict with the Port Town Sector Plan, which a lot of residents and stakeholders spent hours and hours putting together, and this plan goes directly against that. What we're proposing, so note this if you um, could just submit written comments, what we're proposing is we believe a designation that is either commercial general and office zone, cause CGO, or town activity center zone, which is TAC, would work much better in conjunction with the Port Town Sector Plan and the master plan that the council approved excuse me, approved. If you need more information, go to zoningpgc.planning.com and you'll find more information about how to connect to tomorrow's hearing. You have up until September 29th to submit written remarks. So please listen tomorrow and then take the time to come back and submit your written feedback regarding that MAP amendment. The other item is, um, out put the written report on the website for more details. So I'll just move ahead to upcoming items. So one, um, we're continuing our partnership with the state's attorney's office as part of her Our Streets, Our Future initiative. We had a big event in July to create community engagement to bring awareness to gun violence and try to reduce it in our community. And that's where we launched our neighborhood watch. Um, but looking ahead, October 7th at the Bladensburg Waterfront Park, there's going to be a major uh, anti-violence rally and to also bring awareness to young PJ whose life was taken away because of a horrible uh, gun violence incident. Uh, we're bringing all 27 municipalities, or at least inviting them to come out and collectively make, take a stand and a pledge that we're not allowing this stuff in our communities. And people have to know we're not playing with this. We're very committed to ending gun violence in our communities. So you'll see more information coming out about that. It will, um, one of the highlights is it'll be a benefit concert with EU featuring Sugar Bear. So for those who are really into go-go, you, you, you have to be there. Um, and stepping back really quickly to Our Streets, Our Future, the Bladensburg Initiative, at the conclusion of that wonderful rally that we had, we led a community walk with our state's attorney. Some people probably wonder, what's the point in walking through the neighborhood? The point, there's a method to the madness. The point was walking her through that community because uh, about a week prior to the event, <coughs> a similar situation could have happened in Bladensburg that happened to young PJ. Someone with an unauthorized gun shot into an apartment at Autumn Woods that was filled with a family and children sitting there minding their own business and a life could have been lost. By walking State's Attorney Brave Boy through Autumn Woods, pointing out where that took place, it resulted in immediate action and working with Chief Collington because there are certain things that I can't be privy to because they are law enforcement related. He was able to get her the necessary information and within what, 48 hours, we had a warrant issued and the person was off the street and arrested. So if you wonder why we're out, why we're trying to observe, these actions really do matter and they make the community safer. So forget the, the, the reasons why these things don't work be positive, the glass is half full, help us turn things around. Like one of the residents said, put your sneakers on and just come out there with us. Help make the community better if you can. So again, the rest of the details um, will be in the... Sure, so um, with, actually, let me just let you quickly, um, Council Member Rao, do you mind? Because uh, Sugar Bear reached out directly to Council Member Rao yeah. wanting to do something. So Sugar Bear wanted to do something in Bladensburg in particular, and because of PJ. 
and he didn't know anyone in Kitland that's incorporated, so he knew somebody in Bladensburg. He sees the important work that we're doing here to address gun violence. So he reached out to me and said, how can I be involved? And so I just want to thank him. I don't know if you're tuning in or not, but I want to thank him because he's going to provide a free concert, mm -hmm. okay? It's going to be free. So he's not charging us anything um, off of the strength that he sees the work that we're doing. Um, he, he, he sees us. So people see us. And so I just wanted to, he reached out to me. He, wants, he wanted it in Bladensburg. He didn't want it anywhere else in Prince George's County. And that speaks to what we're doing to address gun violence. Thank you for that. So that concludes the mayor and council reports. Thank you everyone for sticking with us. I know this was longer than normal. Uh, at this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So Moved by council member Mendoza. Is there a second? Seconded by Council Member Blunt. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you all. We're adjourned. Good night, everyone. She got the kill him. He was the wrong one. That was the Obama. Um, yeah. I think he was. He